Think like a queen. A queen is not afraid to fail. Failure is another stepping stone to greatness. Oprah Winfrey. This is Get Real with Shamiza. I'm your hostess, Shamiza Ali, and it is truly a pleasure to be here with you this evening. Salam, namaste, and good evening to everyone joining us on Facebook Live, YouTube, Island Zone Radio, and on NTN Channel 69 in Georgetown, Guyana. Woman History Month continues, and tonight we are speaking to a woman who has broken barriers. She has walked out on her marriage and her children. We will find out what she was thinking and how she was feeling at that moment. I'm asking for your complete respect at this time. So tonight, I would like to take this opportunity to answer an important question. Why is it empowering? Why is empowering girls and women important? Empowering women is essential to the health and social development of families, communities, and countries. When women are living safe, fulfilled, productive lives, they can reach their full potential. Uh, contributing their skills to the workforce and can raise happier and healthier children. They're also able to fuel sustainable economies and benefit societies and humanity at large. Please take a moment to share this live on Facebook. And if you're watching on NTN channel 69 in Georgetown, please log into your Facebook account and tell us where you're watching from tonight. And please like and follow our page at Get Real with Shamesa. We will get right to our first guest, but first, here is a message from our sponsors. Kaichu Restaurant has been serving our community for over 25 years. We offer an enticing selection of West Indian traditional dishes along with a fully stocked bar. Bring your family and friends to our newly renovated dining room to celebrate your special occasion or event with us. We do catering and we also deliver. Kaichu has two locations to choose from. Support our community and eat local. Looking for something to get rid of that fine line wrinkles? Well, look no further. You can now indulge yourself with truly flawless. This one-of-a-kind, anti-aging caviar luxury face cream will give you that youthful looking glow again. It's not only for you ladies, men can also benefit from this product too. Try it for yourself and see results within a week. Check out our website at www trulyflawlessskincare.com and on Amazon Prime. We are also excited to launch our newest skincare products coming in March 2022. Inus Driving School offers training for CDL licenses including tractor trailers, trucks and school buses. Just think, with a CDL license, you can have access to thousands of driving jobs at large companies such as FedEx, UPS, MTA or New York Sanitation. Inus Driving School also offers defensive driving courses and training classes for cars and motorcycles, all taught by their college trained instructors who can even schedule your road test appointments. Inquire about other driving and training packages as well. You might even be qualified for their free CDL training as they are a certified institution with the New York State Workforce One program. Call Enos Driving School today. They've been serving our community for over 10 years. Sherry's Weakness for Sweetness is a family-owned and operated bakery with a West Indian flair. We specialized in custom cakes, decorative desserts and a contemporary spin on traditional West Indian cuisine. 
We are located at 114-07 Jamaica Avenue. Hours of operations are Tuesday through Friday 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Memories should always be this sweet. Come visit us today. Welcome back, everyone, and thank you for everyone joining us. I want to say a special good evening to Amy Knott joining us from Canada, uh, Sharita Jagrup, Sean Samwaru. I did see that there is someone joining us from uh, Guyana. Thank you guys so much for being here with us tonight. We have a special discussion, and uh, again, I'm asking for your complete respect as I bring my next guest on, my, my first guest for the night. Uh, and also stay tuned until the end of the show. There is an important announcement and there are some other things that I would like to share with you guys. So stay right where you are uh, and I will introduce my first guest for tonight. Uh, she is fierce, she's passionate and she's not afraid to be herself. Please welcome Annalisa Bahadur. Welcome Annalisa, how are you? Hey, I'm good, how are you? I am excited. <laughs> me too. Me too. Yeah, it's beautiful. funny. After that one hour conversation we had our, earlier. Uh, yeah, it's still exciting. <laughs> exciting. You look beautiful tonight. Thank you. And thank you for thank being you. here. Uh, so tonight we have an important discussion. But first, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm... Um... I'm a heartbreak coach. That's my profession. I'm a mom, um, which is uh, a job that I absolutely love and not so much of a job because, you know, uh, it's so much a part of me. i um, a uh, mother of four children. Uh, I grew up in Guyana. I spent my first 26 years in Guyana. I was born in Berbice. Um, uh, I went to Burby's High School. Uh, it, it's so it's it's amazing. Like I saw these people popping up saying that they're from Guyana, and it's just it's it's just wonderful to be so connected and know that it's, it feels like I'm almost there. So um, yeah, that's just a little bit about me. Now you mentioned that you're a heartbreak coach, mm -hmm. not a word that we use commonly in our community. Tell us uh, as a heartbreak coach, what what do you do? Um. Well, what is a heartbreak coach? As a matter of well, fact, we've got you know everyone. When you when you get into a certification program um, in in coaching, it's usually a life coach or a health coach, and that covers right. a really huge umbrella. You know, you're dealing with business coaching, purposeful coaching. Um, I thought it was too much for me, so I had to pull back and um, really, you know, ask myself what is one thing in the world that I really, really wish never happened and that's heartbreak and i think it's because of my experiences in in the past and you know and whenever someone came to me with something that was heartbreaking um it, it was just this powerless feeling like you, you can't you can't really help them right right and so um i decided to take my experiences um and how i healed on my own took that together and came up with strategies to help others get over um, heartbreaking situations. And that could be from, you know, not just breakups. We go through heartbreaks when uh, we lose a pet, we lose a friend, we move, we move from our home, you know, we lose, we lose friends, colleagues. Um, and it's always very difficult to get on with life. You know, people say, oh, well, that's just how it is. And we move on. But we really don't. We, th we take that, that pain with us and it affects our lives. Um, it affects how we nurture relationships, how we bond with people. Um, so uh, that's, that's pretty much what heartbreak coaching is. Of course, I'm someone who's always asked a question, why? Yeah. I like to get to the root of the problem. Um, and so recently I've started to focus more on childhood trauma because I believe how we heal from heartbreak and how we hurt in heartbreak has a lot to do with trauma in our childhood. And I know a lot of times people think that trauma is just, you know, it's caused by physical abuse or sexual abuse. Um, a lot of times it's uh, neglect, um, you know, feeling of rejection and abandonment in, in childhood. And um, so that's that's what I've been more focusing on. It's healing that trauma and helping people to be wholesome and fierce and free. Well, well, thank you for doing that and and being there, because I know, you know, healing and uh, 
coaching as you do it, it's something that we we all at some point in our life we we need, right? We need that mm -hmm. person to be there. We need to heal. And sometimes we think we can do it by ourselves and we can do it on our own. Or sometimes we feel there is no option available to us. But I'm happy there are people like you that we can go to and we can speak our mind. We can speak about our feelings and you're there to help. Um, mm -hmm. Now, we're here, right? Happy to have you here. Well, there is a question and there is a story that we're here to tell and to really get into. And it's you as a woman. Um, married with three kids that moment that you decided that you no longer wanted to be married you no longer wanted to be a mom to your three beautiful daughters tell us about your marriage what was it like what was having kids what was that experience like for you just you know t give me an idea of what it was like was it happy marriage what was it like for you first of all everything just happened yes you know it, it i was i was 18 when when i got pregnant at 18 i have an 18 year old daughter now the, the youngest of the girls she's 18 and um i was in canada recently where they live and my eldest girl and i were sitting with my 18 year old and it was actually her birthday and we said together can we imagine her having a child <laughs> And we both thought, no way, no, we just can't. So I was, I was her age. I was 18 when I got pregnant. Um, and he's, you know, he's a wonderful man. He always was. Um, he was supportive, responsible, there, present. But we started to have issues and it wasn't caused by him. It was a me thing. It was all the, the hurt and pain in my past. Um, losing my mom when I was 13, being raped, being sexually molested repeatedly, uh, not being able, not knowing how to talk about it. And when taught, when I did talk about it, uh, the reaction I got, you know, I, I got beaten for it. It was going to bring shame to the family. All of those things compounded. And um, I started lashing out, I guess. I'm imagining that I was angry. I can't tell you exactly what I was feeling because I was not processing my feelings at that time. I just remember being really angry um, and not, not knowing how to communicate, being very passive aggressive instead of, you know, really communicating well, really telling him this is how I feel. And, and probably because I didn't know how I felt, right? I couldn't, couldn't sit with myself then and feel my emotions and what they were really saying. So we started to have trouble in the marriage and uh, we decided to get married, right? Uh, I mean, we, we started to have trouble in the relationship and we decided to get married after we had our first daughter. Um, our second daughter came and we thought maybe this would make things better. And of course it couldn't because the problem wasn't in how many kids we had or you know how successful we became. The problem was I needed to heal. Um, and then time went by, um, you know, he was, he was successful. And so was I, um, which kind of, I believe added some sort of a strain to our marriage and the relationship because there was, you know, me wanting to be my own person, um, 18, 21 year old, you know, going to work, uh, in, in a newsroom, I was a reporter and an anchor, uh, but, you know, rushing home to take care of two children when my colleagues are going to the club, something I never experienced, going to a birthday party, right? And um, I guess I was jealous, frustrated, angry, took it out on him. Um, and then baby number three came. And uh, her middle name is Hope. And, um, um, you know, you can guess why we named her Hope. Um, it did not work out and, you know, it got to the point where we both sat down and said, wait a second, you know, they're, the kids are our responsibility. We did not, we did not, th this is not why we brought them into the world. It's our responsibility to make sure that they're okay um, and that they have the best possible life. Um, this is not fair to them. And uh, not that we were fighting and cussing and carrying on, 
but they we knew that they could feel the tension at least you know that's the one thing that i'm grateful to myself for because in all the chaos that was the one thing i knew that they deserved um better so we decided to um to get divorced uh he was the more responsible parent i i had to admit that i was not ready to take care of them um alone and just about that time, he was getting a promotion in Canada. And we both recognized that that was the better place for them. You know, uh, so we sent them up. I sent them up. Yeah. So your youngest at this time, Annalisa, is now, she's a year and a half at that time, right? Mm -hmm. And this mm -hmm. is the point where you guys decided he, you're the successful reporter, anchor. He's a successful uh, in banking at the time. And you guys couldn't see eye to eye on on things in life, which is, you, you said he's an amazing dad. He was so you guys decide to go your separate ways. Now he's moving to Canada with the girls. How is that sitting with you? Because I mean, it's one thing to be separated, but at least, you know, you'll still be able to see the girls, right? You guys now they're moving to different place altogether. Like, what are you thinking at this point as a mom? I lost it. I really lost it. Um, whew. I wanted to keep the baby. I wanted to keep our baby um, because she was young. She was much younger. Um, but it didn't sit well with me. I think because growing up, my mom used to say to me and my sisters that no matter what, you stick together. Right. And it just wasn't sitting well with me. It was only until I made the decision to send all three of the girls with him that I felt a little more relaxed. Um, his mom was also going to move to Canada from the US to be with them. So I, I knew that they were going to be cared for, right? Right. Um, but I had a, a lot of other pressures. Um, not just what I wanted and what was best for the kids, but but the judgment from family members and society. Um, I was told that I was a, a bad mother. Um, you know, people asked, you know, why did you have children if you can't handle it? At 18, you don't know what you're doing. You, you can't think that far. You're just moving through the motions. And, you know, it was years after when uh, my ex and I spoke and, uh, I said, I said, wait a second. I think, I think I probably got the first child to hold on to you. I was so afraid of being left again because there were so many people leaving, not always physically walking away, but mom died when I was 13. My best friend died when I was eight. My grandma died when I was 15. So there were people leaving all the time. We're not just talking about breakups. And here's this amazing man and I got pregnant and you think, huh, you know, you have a child, yeah. he's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. And he laughed about it. You know, a lot of people yeah. would have said, oh, my gosh, how could you do that? How could you trap me? But we understood what we were going through. But, yeah, there was a lot of pressure, especially from society um, that I had to deal with, which you know didn't make it yeah. easy. Now, you speak of being broken from your past experiences and all the trauma that do you think that had a huge impact on the decisions that you've made? Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, when you, first of all, I've got to say my parents were amazing. You know, they weren't beating us and kicking us out and screaming and shouting, insulting, nothing of the sort. They were great parents. Um, there were little things that happened, uh, okay, now I'm a mom and I could look back. I'm, I'm an adult. Uh, I've done some healing. I was the first child. Now, this cute little thing, no baby in the family. Everybody was coming over to our home and I had all of the attention, all of the presence and everything, right? And about three years after, two beautiful babies come into our family. So I've got two sisters and they're twins. Right. So everyone's excited about this. And I could only imagine a three year old me sitting there wondering, why am I not good enough anymore? 
Right. And I can imagine jealousy and feeling of rejection and not good enough. And then as I grew, I tried, I'm, I'm imagining, and now the, that feeling that still follows sometimes, a competition probably developed, you know, trying to get back my position of being favored. Um, and then it was like little things, you know, uh, scoring 99% in school. And being asked by dad, why didn't you get a hundred? Which didn't mean he was just trying to encourage me. But I must have interpreted as not good enough. It's still not good enough, right? Yeah. So you grow up with this not good enough. And then you get into first toxic relationships or unhealthy relationships with people who don't know how to appreciate you. And you start to try to get them to see you and you'll do any and everything for them to see you. So you stay there and you keep getting hurt. Um, and that, it's, it's one thing that, you know, there was hurt along the way, things that you had no, you had no, no control over. Right. But then you lost your friend. I remember speaking with you a, a few months ago and you spoke about that losing your friend at eight, your best friend at eight years old. And what an impact that had on you, uh, mm -hmm. because you were very close to her, uh, losing your mom and so much other things that happened in your life at a very early age. And you're trying to figure all these things out. And now you're married and you're seeing a, a, a whole different world and you're still left in those memories of those trauma that happened to you, right? Um, which is not, you're not the only person that that has happened to. It happens to a lot of people, but not a lot of us can navigate as to how we can carry on with life. So here you are now, you decided, right? You go through all of those things. At some point you said, hey, I'm an adult now. I'm not in my early 20s. This is not what I want out of life. I don't want to be married. I don't want to take the responsibility for kids. And I think your ex-husband being the dad that he was, you see that he's very responsible. He's capable of taking care of his girls, right? A lot of people in that situation probably would not have trusted if this man is able to take care of three daughters. But you knew him. You knew what he was capable of. And you said, okay, what do you do next? After he says, okay, I'm taking that promotion. I'm going to Canada. You have your life now to figure out what's your next move. Oh, make more mistakes. Oh, make a lot more mistakes. Uh, because I did not. I, I, I mean, I was in the marriage, but I didn't know how my childhood affected my present then. Right. I didn't. I could not see any of it. I was just moving. I was just. The only thing I knew is that he was a good man. He was a good husband, and the kids deserved better. That's all I knew, but I did not, I couldn't tell how my past affected me. I was going through the motion, but right. what happened? Did you mm -hmm. have a plan in place? Did you say, okay, so I'm going to be a single woman, no kids, no husband. I want this so that I can do this, this, and this with my life. Did you have a plan in place for your life as to what you wanted to do or what you wanted to accomplish, not being a mom or a, do or, or a wife? Not a clue. And I believe I was just too young. I thought I was smart. I thought I had it figured out. But no, I was just going through the motions. Um, it, I fell in love with someone. Um, he was from India and living in, in Guyana. And I moved with him to India. Um, I was reading a book, uh, Seven Habits of of high high financial people, or? people. Yeah, it's a Stephen Covey book. Influential successful people. Yes. Um, I was reading that, and um, there's a part of it that said, you can't, the gist of it is you can't fix people. You right. can't fix people. And in that relationship with that man in India, I was trying to fix him to love me the way I wanted to be loved. It was a physically abusive relationship. And after reading that book, 
I realized I couldn't do this anymore. I couldn't play the games. I couldn't manipulate a person into loving me. I, I just couldn't do it anymore. It started to get really exhausting. And the next day I got online, I started to, um, I don't know, Google how to, how to walk away from a relationship, how to leave an abusive relationship. I remember a woman saying that after 12 years, she was still stuck in it. And I thought, no way in hell, this is not going to be me. I'm getting out. And that's where I started to do the work. I started to recognize then that there was, there was a pattern. I was the one choosing partners that not that they were bad partners, terrible partners. And I'm not talking about the person in India, um, but I was just choosing people who were not emotionally available or ready for relationships. They were broken people as well. And this is uh, not the girl's father, you know, like yeah. I said, that was a good relationship. Um, and uh, yeah, that was, I started to do the work there. Um, and eventually I left India, moved to the U S um, met someone else a good man. We got married. We have a child. Why did I decide to get divorced? Um, in that 10 years, a lot of healing and growth happened and we were not fighting. We just weren't talking anymore. And we were not talking because we were not, we're not compatible. Wow. We're I just not compatible. I want you to hold that thought right there mm -hmm. because we're going to take a message from our sponsors and we'll be right back. Hibiscus has been a flagship restaurant in our community for a very long time. Come dine with us and enjoy our excellent food drinks and service at any one of our many locations. We are located on 12418101 Avenue and 22113 Jamaica Avenue. Hibiscus at Elliott's on the Mile in Freeport is one of our newest locations, along with 12402 Rockaway Boulevard. In Guyana at 91 Middle Street, Georgetown. Bring your family and friends and come visit us soon. M&R Firefest is one of the newest hotspots in Richmond Hill. If you're looking to have a fun time or just chill, this lounge is the place to be. We celebrate all occasions and our live entertainment and drink specials are amazing. We are located at 13123 Liberty Avenue. Come check us out and see what everyone is talking about. Mandy's Cake Creations serving traditional rum black cake with almond paste and royal icing. Non-alcoholic is also an option. Catering is available. Personalize your cakes and boxed favors for your birthday, engagements, weddings, work events and more. Shipping is also available within the United States. Please contact Mandy at 917-294-3500 on Instagram Mandy K Creations and on Facebook Amanda Khan. Mandy's Cakes, a taste to bring you back home. Flamingo Restaurant and Mantra Lounge, we are NYC's premier Caribbean restaurant and lounge, specializing in authentic West Indian Chinese and Caribbean cuisine. Open every day for lunch and late night. For delivery, Find us on Uber Eats Grubhub Seamless and DoorDash. Visit our rooftop lounge upstairs on the weekends for a fun-filled night. We cater and take bookings for private events. Find us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Flamingo Mantra. Our address is 120-06 Rockaway Boulevard Telephone 7188351000. Canadian-based real estate broker Imran Ali is here to guide and support you for all your real estate needs. He is specialized in residential, commercial and pre-construction properties. With his many years of experience, he is trustworthy, knowledgeable and reliable. He can also provide in-house financing for all your mortgage needs. If you're thinking of buying, selling or investing contact Imran Ali today at 647-283-4127. All right, welcome back everyone. Please check out my cousin Imran Ali in Canada. If you're living in Canada or you're looking to move to Canada, Please call him. He is one of the best in real estate in Canada. So give him a call. All right. Um, Annalisa, I know you were you were telling us about uh, thing. I do have a question from one of our viewers before I complete that um, thought that you had. 
Uh, yeah, I was, I was, um, I was talking about ten years uh, in your my marriage, marriage ten years ago. Um, so what happened there was, again, just out of a really bad relationship in India, moved to the U.S., met someone, and we got married. Um, like all relationships in the beginning, it's you know you're attentive, kind, thoughtful. Everything was going great. Um, and we got a child and uh, couldn't communicate much anymore. You know, it got really quiet. My place was at home and he worked. And uh, it was good because, you know, I, I had my fourth child and I felt like I, I got a chance at a redo at, at being a mom, right? Um, and again, a, a great guy. Um, he would, so my ex is in Canada with the girls and we are here in New York. Um, he had no issues with welcoming my ex and my girls into our lives, um, you know, as a couple. And, and by then a lot of time had passed and my ex and I had built a really good relationship where we were really good friends and co-parenting. Um, so... Uh, I, I don't want to use his name, so we're just going to say um, hmm, ex-husband. Yeah. Right? Girl's father and ex-husband, just to keep this clear. I just don't want to use their names. That works. Um, all right. So ex-husband was a very supportive ex-husband, but we just couldn't communicate. And about three years after the marriage, you know, we had a talk and we're like, okay, I I'm comfortable with this. I've got my son. I, I don't think I want to risk getting into relationships you know, or leaving this relationship. Let's just try to do what's best for this kid. And we, again, co-parented really well um, until about, my son was about seven. We we're walking on the streets one day and he says to me, he's like, mama, I think you should get a divorce. I want you to be happy. And until then, I didn't realize that he knew what was going on, right? We talk about it. Um, Daddy was sleeping in another room. And I'd say, you know, this isn't exactly what marriage looks and feels like, but you know, we want to be, we both want to be there for you. So he's seven and he's like, I, I think you want to, uh, I want you to get divorced and be happy and, and be with someone like, and he starts to, to name the, um, the couples who were modeling a good marriage Right. And, he, you know, at that time, I realized at seven years old, he was taking it all in. Right. Um, he knew what a marriage should look like or a relationship should look like. Um, and that's when I decided, OK, it's, you know, time for for us to go our separate ways. So you here you are, second marriage and uh, four children and. You guys have a mutual agreement now, right? It's you both decided this is what's best, and you move on. Um, I do want to go back a little bit, uh, but first let's take this question from our viewer Priya Prasad. She says, "At what age did you realize that your past was affecting your present?" Twenty-seven. At twenty-seven. Mm -hmm. um, now your your life in India after you realize that relationship was not working and you know you you did do some therapy healing you did find your place you did go and do something tell us about that part of your life okay so 26 was when i moved to india 27 was when i really started to wake up um i, th I think it was probably 21 22 when i was with my uh the the girl's dad i started to look for therapy in guyana if you're living in Guyana, you know, it's almost impossible. And, and it was impossible at that time. Couldn't find a therapist. 27, I started to read the books. I did not have insurance in India, even though I was a resident. Um, but I could not, I, I couldn't find someone to work with. So I went online and I tried to find every possible help I could get, all the articles I could read. Um, I would get bags of books and I'd comb through each and every one of them. Um, what I've noticed with me is that I'll change with every book I change. 
right? Um, so the, the change happened quickly. Um, and uh, I got into, I, I started following Buddhism. I started to meditate. Sorry, it's one yes. of the comments that I'm reading and I'm... Well, I, I can't I, wait to hear it. Ah, uh, someone says good night. Um, sweet yellow mango juice. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why? I, it's so funny to me that I can't get it out of, you know, I had to. Sorry. Please That's continue. That's perfectly fine. That's fine. Um, yeah. So uh, I got into, um, I started to follow Buddhism, I started to meditate. Um, yeah, that's pretty much, and you know, it, it took a while um, for me to eventually find a therapist, but that therapist was found here. So you, you go through all of this and now you're ready. You, at that point, I'm thinking, okay, you're 27, you've done, you think that you're healed, right? From everything, right? Get into another relationship, you come to America and here you are again, 10 years later into that relationship and you're like... So do, what I really want to ask, do you think as human beings, we can ever figure out relationships completely? I think so. I think um, when I met, when, when I met my son's father, um, I, I knew I wasn't like anywhere close to healed, right? I knew I had to do work um, on myself, but the ego is such a powerful thing that it'll convince you that. You, you know what you're doing, right? Yeah. You got this all together. Mm -hmm. Listening to you, Annalise, I hear a woman who, who takes responsibility for her actions. Not a lot of us can sit here like the way you're doing right now and take responsibility for the choices that you make. And, and, you know, really not, not exactly blame yourself, but say saying, Hey, it was me. It was my mistake. These guys were incredible. You know, ex-husband, the kids, the girl's dad, whoever it is, they were, they were good husbands. They, they did things right. It was me. It was me. Not a lot of us are able to do that. So I feel, is there something a, that you have learned that most of us need to really figure out that that makes you take responsibility for your actions uh i'm so sorry i don't know what happened here um i think what it is it's um i recognize at a very early age that this is my life i'm the one with these feelings when i was hurt i was suffering and people shared their opinions and their thoughts and their judgments openly, but none of them knew what I was living with. Um, and I started, I had to own things that I'm not always proud of. You know, um, I don't talk much about this, but I've, I've hurt my ex, the girl's father. You know, I, I remember certain things I've done, but I, I've i hurt him. And, and it's not, I don't want to continue that way. And I think when you take responsibility, you're also saying that this is not the path I want to take. But really, it was all about, it, it and it is, this is my life. Um, it's my path. I'm the one with the feelings. I'm the, I'm the one with, with children, and I want to make sure that they're as whole as they can possibly be. I want to assist them with that. And at the end of it all, I'm the one who's going to be in a box. No one else. Absolutely. Uh, I want to acknowledge Julius Edwards Lavia. I, I think when you grow up in a certain way, you end up looking for love from others instead of learning to love ourselves first. Oh, my point. gosh. Julius Edwards. Oh. Yeah. Julius is one of my very, very first friends from Prep A. What is that over here? Um, I, I think it's pre -K? Like pre K or kindergarten. Oh my gosh. So I was saying, I, I don't know if I told this to Julius. Um, she, her grandma had a, a piano in the house. And after school, we she'd take me over to her place. And that was the first place I saw a piano. And she allowed me to play the keys. And of course, now I'm learning to play the piano. But my love for piano started there. Wow. 
Now, <laughs> Julius is here with you tonight, so I'm sure <laughs> you're happy to see her. Now, I want to also go back a little bit, and I'm hoping that I can actually have your ex. We, we did reach out to him for him to be here tonight because I think the story has two very important sides. And I remember him leaving, and when he moved to Canada, life was not easy for him either. He moved with the girls. Do you want to tell us what happened when he moved with the girls to Canada? Um, uh, are we talking about the beginning? It, it was, uh, well, I have to say that after we broke up, after he moved, it wasn't all hanky-dory. You know, we didn't just slip into, oh, yeah, let's be friends. Let's talk about this. So our egos were on high, high fly, right? We were... Um, we were at each other's throats. Uh, of course, again, he was always the more mature and responsible one at that time. So, you know, he, he kind of just allowed me to vent and scream and shout and all of it. Um, it took a little while for us to start communicating with respect and kindness and compassion. Um, it was, I know he, he, what did he do? He made sure that, I was communicating or in contact with the girls. I would call them every other day from India. And he made sure that they were available to talk to me for as long as I wanted to, or I could. Um, he would send me, he would mail me uh, drawings that they've done, cards that they made, uh, their report cards. So he kept them in my life and me in their lives. Uh, when I moved to New York, I could not travel to Canada at the time. So he would drive the girls to the border. And um, my husband then and I would drive from New York to Canada, uh, to New York's border, pick them up and come back here. When we started to travel together, um, you know, he would accommodate me in his space, his home, so I could be with the girls. And, you know, we, we just developed a great relationship. Um, he was doing perfectly fine until the girls started to hit the teenage years. <laughs> and then he called and he would say, look, I, I don't know what to do here. I don't have siblings. I'm not a girl. I don't have sisters. Um, but yeah, he's, he's had some difficulties. Um, his mom passed, you know, that's a story I prefer if he told, I, I really right. can't speak and, for him. Uh I will but if he's yeah, watching the things that you had to maneuver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If he's watching, Dennis, if you're watching tonight, we would love to I'm extending an invite for you to be on the show and also, you know, tell your story because I know you have an amazing story as well. So here you are, and you have the story doesn't end here. So anyone that's watching right now and think that Annalise's story ends here, no, it doesn't. But we have to listen to a message from our sponsors at this time. So stay right where you are, share if you can, and we will be right back. Kai Chu Restaurant has been serving our community for over 25 years. We offer an enticing selection of West Indian traditional dishes along with a fully stocked bar. Bring your family and friends to our newly renovated dining room to celebrate your special occasion or event with us. We do catering and we also deliver Kai Chu has two locations to choose from. Support our community and eat local. Looking for something to get rid of that fine line wrinkles? Well, look no further. You can now indulge yourself with truly flawless. This one-of-a-kind, anti-aging caviar luxury face cream will give you that youthful looking glow again. It's not only for you ladies, men can also benefit from this product too. Try it for yourself and see results within a week. 
check out our website at www.trulyflawlessskincare.com and on Amazon Prime. We are also excited to launch our newest skincare products coming in March 2022. Inus Driving School offers training for CDL licenses including tractor trailers, trucks and school buses. Just think, with a CDL license, you can have access to thousands of driving jobs at large companies such as FedEx, UPS, MTA or New York Sanitation. Inus Driving School also offers defensive driving courses and training classes for cars and motorcycles, all taught by their college train instructors who can even schedule your road test appointments. Inquire about other driving and training packages as well. You might even be qualified for their free CDL training as they are a certified institution with the New York State Workforce One program. Call Enos Driving School today. They've been serving our community for over 10 years. Sherry's Weakness for Sweetness is a family-owned and operated bakery with a West Indian flair. We specialized in custom cakes, decorative desserts and a contemporary spin on traditional West Indian cuisine. We are located at 114-07 Jamaica Avenue. Hours of operations are Tuesday through Friday 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Memories should always be this sweet. Come visit us today. All right, we are back and I do want to acknowledge a few of our viewers. Natasha Bacchus for the skincare line that you just saw. Uh, please let us know if you're interested in getting a sample of it. I know our very own Ryan Jeffrey was speaking about it last week. So if you like a sample, I'll reach out to myself or Natasha Bacchus and we'll definitely get you a sample. All right. So anyone who's interested, Sandy, who was one of our guests a few weeks ago, uh, says the childhood trauma affects you into adulthood. Agreed. And Sherry Muhammad says childhood trauma most times affect adulthood. No matter how hard you try and move on, there is still traumatized child living within you. Uh, Annalisa, so here you are now, right? feel like you've lived an uh, entire lifetime, but I look at you, you still look like you're in your 20s, <laughs> right? Um, so you. here you are now, two failed marriages, right? Four kids later. What's life like now for you? Oof. Oh my gosh. Um, the past, it's, it's like I, I knew that girl like I met her sometime back I know a little bit about her I can't remember her much um, but there are times when I want to go back and say hey you know what there's nothing to be afraid of you know just just enjoy it just take it one day at a time um, I honestly feel grounded but I know there's still a lot of healing to do um, I'm a little more aware I'm aware of my emotions um, I'm happy I feel at peace, you know, I'm in a space where uh, I'm watching my kids grow and become their own little people. And um, I've learned a lot from them, um, you know, how to be respectful of who they are, respect their boundaries, mainly because I never learned, most of us never learned how to have boundaries. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, um, I'm in a good place. I'm in a really good place. And recently, I've just been kind of feeling fearless you know yeah um i'm dating someone and he often says what's the worst that can happen and that's he's such he's, he's it's something. like it's such a freeing you know thing to think about what's the worst that can happen very nice i want to hear more i want to hear more about dating but first let's let's revisit some of the things now you said that you feel a lot of emotions you're at peace you're you're you feel yourself you feel at ease in this moment right a lot of people are confused about their emotions. For example, snapping at your kids or a spouse for a reason that sometimes you're not sure of. What do you think the reason for this is? Um, I think I think we're overwhelmed and exhausted at times, and we don't know how to find the right words to name those emotions 
because most of the times we're just going through the motion like like I was you know we go through the motion we don't stop we don't we don't recognize our emotions we don't even know what they are so it's easy to snap and I think that's what you know that's what I was talking about the the childhood trauma that can happen that parents can unintentionally inflict upon their children without realizing when you snap at a child, say you're exhausted, you've had a a really difficult day and you're sitting there maybe trying to have a a cup of coffee. Your child comes in and wants something, help me with homework, but you're so tired, you're exhausted. And you're like, you know what? Just leave me alone. Leave me alone. Now that child has no idea what your day was like. They don't know what you're feeling. You probably don't even realize what you're feeling. That child feels neglected not good enough, rejected. And that child walks away with, mommy doesn't love me, daddy doesn't love me. I'm not important, right? You take that with you. Um, and if, if we could pause and pull ourselves, even after that snap, if we could pause and pull ourselves together and say, wait a second, what's going on here? What am I feeling? Why did I snap? I'm tired, I'm overwhelmed. I probably did a lot and I feel undervalued. I probably feel like my efforts were not seen. And I call my child back, right? And I say, wait a second, you know, I'm really sorry I snapped. It's got nothing to do with you. Mommy's just had a really difficult day. Mommy's done this, mommy's done that. What happens in relationships, you are going to have harmony, disharmony and repair. How long it takes to repair is what can either create that trauma or minimize it or just remove it, right? But not being able to sit with ourselves and really check in and really name that emotion. Is it sadness, frustration, anger, happiness, joy, peace, whatever it is, if you can't name your emotion, then you don't know what's really happening with you. And you don't, you can't recognize how it's affecting your relationships. And I mean, the ego plays a part all the time. Every time you feel like you you have to defend yourself, you feel like you're being attacked, the ego will jump up. It doesn't mean that you can't recognize it. You know, um, I, I, I told you this earlier, and I, I know we're going to talk about him a little more later. But the one thing with my partner is that if, if my ego jumps out and um, I say something that he's not comfortable with, he'll say it. And I love that because what it does is it stops me from causing damage, right? You want to repair. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, getting getting in touch with with yourself and your emotions, that helps. Now, speaking about ego, do you think our mm-hmm. ego is to be blamed for the way we act a lot of times? First of all, I think you need to understand. I think we all need to understand the purpose of the ego. It's there to protect you when your psychology, your whole being, your wiring feels like it's under attack, right? When you're strong in who you are, what I mean by that is when you know who you are, like we were talking about, you said that I could own my mistakes. I could own who I am, things that I'm not proud of. I could say that. I can say that because I also know that I'm a good, kind person who's trying to heal, who's trying to be better. So yes, I'll make mistakes. I could own it. Yeah, I'm human. I, you know, I've got flaws. So that's my identity built. Right. Right. The ego will come into play when I'm not really certain about something. So let's say, for example, someone came and said I was a bad mother. If I believed it, my ego will jump in to defend me. But who I am, my identity doesn't believe it. My identity is like, yeah, yeah, right. Sure. Whatever. So my ego can't play there. But of course, I'm still healing. So there are going to be things about me that I I will want to defend against because I am not quite grounded in believing it's not true. That's a great explanation as to what ego is like and, and how it affects us. Um, I do want to take a, uh, I think it's just a, um, I'm not sure if it's a question, but I'll read it to you. Would you say that thoughts drive emotion? If, if we, if we checking and being more aware of the flickering thoughts, we can avoid being overwhelmed by emotions. From Priya Prasad. For sure. For sure. You could change. If you change your thoughts, you change your emotions. For sure. 
but it, it helps to understand those thoughts because the thing about thoughts is that they could just keep coming up they could keep showing up and that's why we meditate to understand why those thoughts are there well said here you are dating tell us i giggle <laughs> giggle uh you're would you say you're where where are you at at this point has it how long has it been and where are you at oh we've been dating oh we met about 10 months ago um oh um i don't know it's 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 uh it's the kind of relationship that i knew i needed i i know is um we're compatible right because this is what this is what i need i need someone to come in instead of step out when there there's an issue uh i need to yeah it's so funny i always i could rattle this off um no you you think you're you're in that moment that you're taking your time and you're answering based on how you're feeling so with with him i don't i don't think either one of us want to make the same mistakes that we've made in the past with relationships i don't want to make the same mistakes i don't want to take this kind precious human being and make a mess of him or it or us right so i'm very um i'm very careful with how we uh, how i communicate with him um, I'm very uh, aware of my feelings when I'm with him, when he's not there, because in past relationships, when my partner wasn't there, I'd get all anxious. Are they leaving? That sort of thing. That does not happen in this relationship at all. Um, it's a relationship where, like I said, we come in, we talk to each other, we discuss issues, we move forward. I think we're very well aware of, you know, what relationships are. It's harmony, disharmony and repair. And we're very quick to getting to the repair bit of it. Um, we are funny, but we talk. I talk about this often. It's like you know, we don't have a whole lot in common. Like he's teaching me so much. He's teaching me new music. He's brought back music into my life. He plays the guitar. Um, he's so funny. So there's a lot of laughter. Um, he's just he's so easy and he's kind and he's compassionate and he's just absolutely precious and so just being with him i could just be myself and i think that's you know one of the great things it's like it's it's just so easy looking at you speaking it just it seems like a little young girl in love for the first time and just you're just you just give that feeling of, of a young girl being in love for the first time and really really and truly is in love but uh Suzanne is asking how would you know that you folks are compatible which i think is an important question how is it the way you feel is it the way that he he the communication that you guys have what is different from the other relationships like it's, like you mentioned earlier all relationships in the beginning you know, it's all, I don't know, honey and, and beautiful things being said and done, right? Mm -hmm. but how do you really know that there is a difference in this relationship? What is it about? Uh, the way we communicate. It's it's all about the way we communicate with each other. Um, in the past, uh, I would feel unheard, unseen, you know, shut down, shut out. Um, it was always the, uh, no, you're crazy. Um, I don't know what you're talking about, you know. Um, and this one is different. This is where if he's got something he wants to talk about, I'm there to listen. We correct our mistakes. We apologize. You know, um, that's the difference with this one. There is always respect, always kindness. And when there isn't, one of us will remind the other. And it stops right there. Um, that's the difference with this one. I know you're saying that it, you know, I look like a, a kid in love. Um, the butterflies that you get in relationships, that's one thing I've learned. If there are butterflies, that's anxiety and that's your body telling you it's not a healthy right. relationship. Um, this is, it's just, it's, it's a quiet yet very loud love. Yeah. 
All right. No. I, I do want to hear more about it. But first, let's go to the messages. Hibiscus has been a flagship restaurant in our community for a very long time. Come dine with us and enjoy our excellent food drinks and service at any one of our many locations. We are located on 12418101 Avenue and 22113 Jamaica Avenue. Hibiscus at Elliott's on the Mile in Freeport is one of our newest locations, along with 12402 Rockaway Boulevard. In Guyana at 91 Middle Street, Georgetown. Bring your family and friends and come visit us soon. M&R Firefest is one of the newest hotspots in Richmond Hill. If you're looking to have a fun time or just chill, this lounge is the place to be. We celebrate all occasions and our live entertainment and drink specials are amazing. We are located at 13123 Liberty Avenue. Come check us out and see what everyone is talking about. Mandy's Cake Creations serving traditional rum black cake with almond paste and royal icing. Non-alcoholic is also an option. Catering is available. Personalize your cakes and boxed favors for your birthday, engagements, weddings, work events and more. Shipping is also available within the United States. Please contact Mandy at 917-294-3500 on Instagram Mandy K Creations and on Facebook Amanda Khan. Mandy's Cakes, a taste to bring you back home. Flamingo Restaurant and Mantra Lounge, we are NYC's premier Caribbean restaurant and lounge, specializing in authentic West Indian Chinese and Caribbean cuisine. Open every day for lunch and late nights. For delivery, find us on Uber Eats Grubhub Seamless and DoorDash. Visit our rooftop lounge upstairs on the weekends for a fun-filled night. We cater and take bookings for private events. Find us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Flamingo Mantra. Our address is 120-06 Rockaway Boulevard Telephone 7188351000. Canadian-based real estate broker Imran Ali is here to guide and support you for all your real estate needs. He is specialized in residential, commercial and pre-construction properties. With his many years of experience, he is trustworthy, knowledgeable and reliable. He can also provide in-house financing for all your mortgage needs. If you're thinking of buying, selling or investing contact Imran Ali today at 647-283-4127. All right, we are back and I'm excited because I'm about to find out more stuff about you. Um, but uh, I want to thank all of, all of our viewers right now that's watching. Um, great questions, great comments. Thank you guys. Keep it coming. We appreciate what you do. Please support our sponsors because they make all of this possible, all right? So all of the sponsors that you just see, support them. Summer is coming. Go out, have dinner, enjoy evening, get some cake, call the realtor, do whatever you have to do, all right? And mention Get Real with Shamiza. I don't know. You'll probably get Polari or something with your order. I don't know. <laughs> just do it. <laughs> um, so let's get back to you, Annalisa. Um, here you are now you're glowing right as one of our viewers said that you're just you just glow differently right um what is next for you i know i see your posts every day and if you're not following her please follow her a lot of uh information that can bring awareness that can help people for anyone that's out there listening to everything that you just say you just said and they're they want to know more about you how can they get in contact with you before I get to that, I yeah. feel like I did an injustice to everyone when someone asked a question about what makes this relationship different. And I feel like it's important that people know that when you're looking for your person, right? When, when you're building a relationship with your person, you first have to know what works for you, what, what you need. You have a different need from everyone else. Success for you looks differently, right? Um, for me, I needed someone to share my morals and values, right? Someone to be present, someone who is going to be respectful and kind and non-judgmental, um, and someone who would help or, or not, not actively help with my growth, but someone who brings something that helps me grow or makes me want or inspires me to grow. And that's what this relationship does. 
right? Now, how do you find me? Um, really, it's just my name. Type it into Google, Annalisa Bahadur. Uh, my Facebook account will pop up. Uh, it's the same at Annalisa Bahadur uh, for Instagram. My email address, it's Annalisa Bahadur at gmail.com. Uh, the website, it's AnnaliseBahadur.com. What is next for you? You know, oh, so much. <laughs> is, there book, is there a book in the making? Uh, there is a book in the making. Um, the editor, she's finishing up the last two chapters, and then I'm going to send them off to a few people, you know, to get their take on it. Um, it's it's a memoir of uh, of my path and you know how I got to where I am the, the healing process of it all trauma um, learning boundaries and um, the healing that's happening and you know um, becoming grounded. Uh, there's the book um, that Jonathan and I my son and I were discussing these uh, little deck cards uh, to help. Uh, kids communicate better with their parents because sometimes kids don't know exactly how to share their feelings with parents. So we're, we're doing deck cards on that. That's a lot of fun project. Um, yeah. Uh, getting back to traveling, you know, with COVID a little in the background, can't wait to do that, but yeah. You also have your very own show on YouTube. Um, yes, I have not been doing justice to it. Um, I do have a, it's called Heart of the Matter. Um, it's where I interview, um, you know, ordinary people. I, I don't mean like huge celebrities um, who have gone through difficult experiences and they have found their way out, whether it's through ter uh, therapy, coaching or, or on their own um, to share their stories so that others could be inspired to grow. Perfect. Yeah. Well, part of the matter, it's on YouTube, and I'm supposed to start again in two in two months. It's just it's just so much to do. It it is, and listen, just take one day at a time. I feel like you're in a good place right now, and uh, you need to just keep going. Do you ever feel before we go this this evening? Do you ever feel we're ever truly healed? healing process like we get to a certain point and we're healed there's nothing else that we need to do or do you think it's an ongoing process um i've been in therapy for three years now and there are times when i feel like there's nothing to talk to my therapist about and we get to, into a conversation and she'll ask a question and i'd be like oh my gosh i think this started then you know like 20 30 years ago and i asked her i said do you think the healing ever ends? Like, I feel like it never does. And she says, if you want to keep growing, then you should never stop healing. Right. Right. Um, I don't believe it does. I believe, um, and I don't, I, I just, we, we learn methods, ways of coping with new things. Um, but yeah, you only know what you need to heal from when the, the brick hits you, I suppose. Absolutely. I truly, my personal opinion is that I don't think one ever truly heals. And it's different things that affect us as human beings. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, all the trauma or it's different things. And I feel it's, it's a process. And as we live, the only way we can grow is we have to keep healing and we have to keep being better than we were yesterday and just keep growing. And it's the only way for us to be able to take on more in life. Mm -hmm. And Annalisa, tonight was definitely real talk. Um, to be honest with you, coming into tonight's topic, I was a little bit hesitant. Um, I did not know how my viewers will think. I did not want any disrespect to you. But I'm grateful that tonight it went as well as it did. And I want to say thank you so much for sharing your story. Even though it might not be the perfect story, it is your story. And you take ownership and you take responsibility for your choices. And that, for me, is what woman empowerment is. Tonight, you've empowered our viewers. You've empowered me. And I thank you for that. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on the show. Thank you to all of you who came out. Uh, this is such an amazing, amazing um, purpose that you, you're living. I love this. Oh, my baby! My baby. <laughs> That's not, that crystal my baby. baby. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, um, it's just, it's that's just... Crystal, my eldest girl. Oh, I love oh, you. Wow. <laughs> I'm happy that she caught us in, in the last minute. And, uh, 
definitely. Um, as much as I will, I hate to see you go, we have to come to an end. And uh, hopefully there is a, a second part to this where we do speak to the girl's dad. And um, Yeah, I'm going to try to bug him some more. I, I don't know. Yeah, that. Um, because again, like I said, he has quite an interesting story. His part of the story is, is you know, a story as well. So I'm hoping to speak to him soon. Um, uh, tonight's show, I have to end um tonight's guest annalisa has taught me that we all have things we are not proud of i learned that we are all a work in progress and we need to embrace our imperfections we need to be conscious of our ego and accept who we are what did you learn from tonight's show next week we will have an open discussion on women's roles in society and the home Joining me for the discussion is Nira Duki and Sheffield Shirling. I would like to thank my guests, Annalisa, my sponsors, and you, my viewers, for your continued love and support. Until next time, be your unique self, be free. Good night. Bye-bye.